Hello everyone, I'm Crow77, and today we're going to talk about Suji. We're going to start off with the raw basics. First we'll go over what a Suji is and how to use it. Then we're going to touch on traps with Suji and what you need to watch out for. Finally, we're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into the statistical side of the game and look at some expected value calculations. So, to start off, what does it mean for a tile to be Suji? A Suji tile at its most basic is a tile that's three tiles away from another. So for example, a 1 and a 4 in any suit are suji. The specific relevance of this is that a roundman weight, such as 2-3, is waiting on one of these two tiles, in this case the 1 and the 4. If you pair up all the suji in the game with their partner, there's a total of 18 suji pairs. Now we have it all defined, but how is that important? Well, after genbutsu tiles, Suji are typically the most common way to determine what tiles are safe to discard when you're trying to defend against someone. This is because of the basic Furiten rule of Reach Mahjong, where if someone could have won off a single tile in their discards, they cannot declare a Ron, only a Suma win. So since players tend towards Roundman weights in hand when they declare Reach, Suji can be used as a defensive tool to help decide what to discard. Let's take a look at an example. Early reaches can be difficult to fight against, so understanding the fundamentals of Suji are great to know in this sort of situation. We can see the player to our right here has declared a reach on turn 7, so the safest play we can go for would be to discard the pair of 9 so that we have in hand, and possibly look at discarding the West Wind as well, since two have been discarded already. Instead though, we can avoid taking apart our hand or using up the super safe West Wind this early by discarding the 1 pin which is significantly less safe, to be honest, but since it is Suji of the 4-pin that we see discarded, it is still a reasonably safe discard. With many lower pins already being discarded and combined with the early 2-pin discard from the player who reached, this means this is not an unreasonable discard at all, which will allow us to keep fighting for Tenpai for this hand, while saving the West Wind in case the player across from us starts to look more dangerous. We can't just look at Suji on the outside, though. There's also Naka Suji, with Naka being the Japanese word for inside. What this means is that you see, if you see both of the outer Suji of an inner tile, the middle one also gets safer. So in this example, there's not many Pinzu on the board, so many times we would want to follow the player to our left and discard the three pin that they did to avoid dealing in. However, since the player who declared Reach has discarded both the one and the seven pin, the 4-pin becomes Nakasuji. Nakasuji are typically considered safer than regular Suji, since a lot of times players will be more likely to take bad weights if they're closer to the edge of the suit, like a 1 or a 2, rather than a central tile like a 4 or a 5. We still need to watch out for the likely flush across the table in this example, but at least against the reach, this one is usually going to be pretty safe. Worth noting, however, is that the tiles that are Suji to the tile used to declare reach are less reliable than they normally would be. We'll get to that in a minute. The reliability of any Suji, though, can go up and down depending on many factors in the game, but some players will intentionally use this to their advantage and set up what is known as a Suji trap. These come in several forms, but basically, if I can wait on a Tonki wait for the one so, then discarding four so will be more likely to trick players into dealing into my hand, because of this knowledge of Suji. Similar things can happen for other weights. Double pawn weights can be trapped by a tile for either pawn, and kanchan or penchan weights can be trapped in a similar way to the tanki. There are some shapes that naturally fall into this sort of trap. Take for example 579. This is a common shape, known as a ryankan, that players will keep in their hand. Even though it's not ideal like a ryanman would be, it is more efficient than keeping a lot of single kanchans in your hand, like a 6-8 in one suit and 5-7 in another. However, if this is someone's last shape in their hand, they'll typically discard the 5 to reach or to wait on the winning tile. This creates its own Suji trap naturally, since the 8 is going to be Suji to the 5. Because of this and similar shapes, trusting the reach tile or the tile that you think someone discarded to get into Tenpai as a Suji indicator is much less reliable than other Suji. In general, the earlier a tile disc is discarded, the more reliable it's going to be as a Suji. The different suji themselves can be more dangerous as well, because of the number of shapes that can use them. In general, the closer to an edge the tile is, the safer it is as a suji. 
Take a look here at the number of shapes that can use different suji. If a 4 has been discarded, the suji 1 can only be used in a tanki or shanpon weight. If a 5 has been discarded, the suji 2 can be used in a tanki, shanpon, or kanshan weight. And lastly, if a 6 has been discarded, the suji 3 can be used in any of the suji traps, tanki, shanpon, kanshan, or penchan. So it's clear that there's many more ways to use the 3 than the 1, meaning the 3 is going to be a more dangerous suji than the 1 in most cases. The same is true for 7, 8, and 9. 9 is usually the safest, and 7 is the most dangerous. This is affected by game state, of course. Make sure you pay attention to all the discards you can. So let's take a look at a game where this did happen. So here we see the player to our right has tons of tiles that are suji. Most tiles in Sozu are, and pretty much everything except for the 3, 6, and 9. There's certainly something weird going on with that hand, though, which could be a flush of some kind, but at a glance, it does seem to make the Sozu significantly safer. So this player decides to move towards Tanyao by discarding the one so. However, we can see this is a critical error. In this situation, this player's hand does not have enough value and has not progressed far enough to try to use Suji to defend. Instead, they likely should have fully folded the hand and stuck to a completely safe discard that they had available, like the 6 Mon and the 4 so. Remember, just because you know about Suji doesn't mean you should use them all the time. Genbutsu tiles are always going to be safer. So be aware of that if you try and push using Suji instead, like in this last example we saw. So, let's switch gears a bit and get started on some statistics. We'll take a look at how we use Suji to calculate expected discard values. First of all, when doing this sort of calculation, it's important to know how many Suji are alive and how many are dead. If one or more Suji tiles in a Suji pair have been discarded by the player we're concerned about, we'll consider them dead. So right now, the player across from us is declared reach. Counting Suji, we can see that there's six Suji that are dead. Notice how we get this information from only four tiles. The four mon and five mon kill two Suji pairs at the same time. To calculate approximately what our deal in percent is, we're going to assume that the player that declared reach has a Ryanmin Tenpai. That is, their final shape is an open weight, such as 5-6 waiting on 4-7. From there, to calculate deal in chance, we just have to do a simple calculation of how many live Suji we're discarding, divided by the total number of live Suji. As we mentioned before, a central tile, a 4, 5, or a 6, can kill two Suji at the same time. So we call it a double Musuji, and we have to include it in the calculation. From there, we can expand these equations into a table, since the estimated rate only depends on the number of live Suji. From this, we can actually calculate roughly how much each discard will cost us, in terms of expected value. In essence, we base the estimated value on averages. A dealer reach is, on average, worth about 10,000 points, assuming there's a good number of Dora still alive. Similarly, a non-dealer hand is worth about 6,500 points on average. So we can say that if I deal a double Musuji central tile, like a 5, against a deal of reach with 10 live Suji, that discard will cost me an average of 2,000 points. That's like declaring reach twice without all the added Yaku. If my hand is only worth 2,000 points, it's plain to see that this might not be a great choice in a lot of cases. You can use values like this to estimate the approximate cost, so to speak, of pushing against reaches and weigh them against the expected benefit. As with many statistics like this in Mahjong, there's a lot of assumptions here, so this is far from 100% perfect, but it can be a decent guideline when it's used. Let's take a look at one very specific application of this theory. We can see that the player we're watching is in Tenpai, but to maintain it, they have to discard the 4-pin. However, this tile is Musuji against the reach to our right, so the question is, should we discard this or not? Let's go ahead and apply the statistical principle we just learned against the reach. First, I'll count Suji. This can take a couple minutes to do, so if you want to do this on your own, go ahead and pause the video now. Based on the tiles on the board that the player to our right have discarded, as well as the tiles from other players discarded after the reach, we can calculate that there are 6 live Suji left. However, make sure you don't miss anything. The 1-4 pin Suji pair is dead as well, because we can see that all 4 of the 2 pin have been discarded. That means no one can be waiting with 2-3 pin. So in reality, only 5 Suji are live. 
Though it doesn't apply to this example, make sure you don't miss any called tiles there might be. It is possible that other players could also be in Tenpai, and even highly likely for the player across from us. But for the purposes of this analysis right now, I'm going to assume they aren't. Now we know almost exactly how many points discarding this 4 will give us, because of the Ryukoku penalties at the end of the hand. Again, assuming that the player to our right is the only other player in Tenpai, instead of paying 1000 points, will gain 1500, to a total point difference of positive 2500. All we need to do is compare this value to the estimate value in the table previously, or do the math. The home is a small amount, but it can be relevant to the analysis. Running the numbers, a dealer reach with 5 live suji and 1 honba means dealing the 4 pin is an estimated value of negative 2060. So comparing these two numbers, we end up with positive 440. That means that, on average, we'll gain 440 points from making this discard. Therefore, strictly by the numbers, trying to maximize the number of points we get, we should discard the 6. It's worth noting that, with how close this comparison is, it will backfire a significant portion of the time, but you should end up with more points than you lose on average. But don't forget to factor in Ipatsu. Though I don't have the stats for that, I would assume that it raises the estimated value by about 2,000 points, and this is something we typically need to consider for Haite as well if we have the last discard. By changing these numbers a little bit, we can see the estimate of gain and loss is extremely close now, only a 40 point difference. Because of the large potential downsides of dealing into a dealer hand, I probably wouldn't go for it here. Now as I mentioned before, there's many, many assumptions here. Especially in online play, the cost of dealing in can be more than just points. If it's something that's likely to push you to 4th place, a lot of times you have to weight it even more. Even in tournament or league play, there's Uma to consider. Aside from that, we're assuming that no other player is in Tenpai, which could drastically change the odds of dealing in. To calculate that, you'd count the Suji for the other player as well, and add in another negative factor to the point loss estimation. In this case, though, using the formulas we looked at, it wouldn't apply, because the 4-pin is also not a Suji against the player across from us. We're also assuming that the player who reached is on a roundman weight instead of some kind of Suji trap, as we just saw before. But at the end of the day, it does give us a good look at the value of being Tenpai at the end of the hand versus the cost of dealing in, and why it's often worth it to try to keep Tenpai, especially if you're on the last discard with only one other player in Tenpai. Just don't go trying to apply the same formula if you're still five discards away. That'll take a much bigger judgment call or a much, much bigger formula. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any feedback, topic ideas, or issues, please let me know. If you want notifications of when I post a new video, hit the subscribe button. Have a good one.